Okay, so unit is just an introduction to maintenance management. Maintenance is so important to an industry because you have to make sure activities needed to keep a system and all its component of that system is in working order. Okay? So system, they have processes and all these processes are right? operations and equipment, okay? machines, operators, all of it. So anyway, we're looking at all the activity we need it to keep this system going. And you already know the system is composed of components. We have complex system, simple system. So any type of system components in the systems are connected to each other. And maintaining the systems to make sure this thing okay, is running and and working. Yeah. Uh, just like you stay healthy, yeah? your body is a system. Okay, it's a biological system. And the intelligence there is your conscious mind watching over the system. That's means. So that you get up and eat and work, okay, functioning, and do it every day, just like that. In industry, you are producing something, a product. In order for the product to come out, from the system. You have to make sure all the activities in the system is that are connected got to be in working. Okay. I think you got it. that is called industry maintenance. So when you like take a look at the picture, these little lines and processes the process to process processes and these are just the components of that system okay. again you gotta keep this system going so therefore we can make sure everything is okay yeah so that's what so and system so system so any DV channel change in a okay, or system satisfactory to the question that's been acceptable acceptable standards for the system so any any change Channel system sources or in data daily. So, some sort of aims to prevent system. Okay, so the next one is cost. Another big thing. So cost in manufacturing industry is all about money, yeah. And maintenance, industrial maintenance, we again eliminate or reduce two big things. One is the number of failures, okay, and the other one is the cost associated with failures. Reduce the failure or eliminate 
reduce the cost for that failure or eliminate. That's what we do to control the cost. And again, that's not for manufacturing production system. Okay, that's for um, industrial maintenance, maintenance part only. And what we try to do is to keep the system running, we use something called Prevented Maintenance Program. And if we use Prevented Maintenance Program to keep the system healthy, we believe that that cost for that okay, Prevented Maintenance Program is lower than uh, Reactive Maintenance, which is your repair and breakdown uh, if happened during the systems operation. Okay, so you're running the production system and something breaks in the system and you gotta stop your production or repair that. That cost is way higher than maintaining a prevented maintenance activity, okay, regularly. So prevented maintenance is nothing but checking the system and placing a full break. Okay. Like simple example is going to maintaining your personal car. So do you drive your car okay, until something breaks? Or do you drive the car and uh, maintain a car regularly by following the manufacturer's um, maintenance uh, plan, okay, which is actually you will find it in car manual. There is a maintenance plan and some of the company, okay, car company will force you to do regular maintenance and they go I think up to twenty twenty five thousand I believe is it twenty five thousand miles free maintenance in okay, case have to do. Or you have to just take your car and give it and they do the maintenance regular support up to twenty five thousand miles. And if you pay more money you can okay, do it up to one hundred thousand and there's a warranty parts for your car system. Just like that. Okay, manufacturing system is a very complex system. And you can contract maintenance on company to do the maintenance or you can do your in-house maintenance okay, engineer that will take care of the system. So doing the maintenance called prevent the maintenance costs lower than reactive okay reactive is nothing just you repair and fix it, it will fix without doing a regular maintenance so now let's take a look at scholarly growth right here study about it. of course all these data are cumulative and storage study So any kind of system, okay, a certain level of maintenance is always needed. You have to do, you can just run the system without taking care of it because we have natural wear and tear, equipment or age, just like you, you just like we age, okay? Is there every day, one day, or yesterday? It's equipment, the same thing, because they're all made of some material, right? So, yeah, wear and tear, different clients, tools, facilities, equipment, okay, are all subjected to subjected to environment to so their age. Therefore you have to maintain. So the maintenance cost must not be more than savings, okay, resulting from such events. So the system also have to produce profit and the businesses you use a lot of the uh, money regular maintenance 
um, for that system. In systems, the uh, profit got to be uh, 80%. So you can cover and run systems. So when you take a look at it here, yeah, cost came on it. This is your y axis, just a general graph. This is your x axis. So every time we study factors, we draw that, see their relationship. Okay, so here we're drawing cost and preventive maintenance, which is your regular routine maintenance. This one is the maintenance that you do only when something breaks, repair, and break down. So we have we're looking at the Okay, relationship here, relationship two, and here's the relationship three. So what are these things? It's a system. System at optimal condition. This is a system on the preventive maintenance program. This is again your system that have been pair and break down. Okay, the system cost. So the cost when you look at it at the Man, okay, condition. You look at it, it should go that way. So that is the cost of the system at optimum condition. If you put on a preventive maintenance, cost is going to up that way. Okay. If you look at the repair and breakdown, cost okay really high at this point going down, down right there yeah. so now we are going to take a look at their interaction at a point in study so concentrating this point of level of maintenance commitment okay we're going to commit maintenance we're doing the end of maintenance if you do preventive maintenance, that cost okay, is lower than the repair and breakdown. So look at this. See, this is a repair and breakdown line. is above the preventive maintenance line. See that? Yeah. And this is the optimum systems. Okay. And this optimum cost is, is actually what you're earning, okay? So that's got it got to be way higher than the cost that you use for preventive maintenance. See? It's lower because the cost increases this way. And it looks like simple grub of different <laughs> So this is a preventive maintenance cost is lower than maintenance that you do. When the system breaks okay but both of them are lower than your profit okay uh, when the system is running optimum so if you spend about let's say five thousand will be saving let's say this is about eight thousand you're saving and repairing when the system breaks Okay, at that time, the system is generating, let's say, at $150,000. So you spend uh, $5,000 out of $150,000. So you have $150,000 minus 5, which is $145,000. Okay, so that's what it's saying. So maintenance costs must not be than the savings result such maintenance okay all right so now i'm going to erase it so now when you take a look at it you should understand right we are concentrating at this point of maintenance commitment this is our system optimum and here, if we do the regular maintenance, 
our optimum care system is going to be right here. And if you repair the system, only when it breaks down, it's going to cost more. Yeah, than the cost that you will put for the preventive maintenance regularly. Yeah, but this is lower than that. Yeah? And analyzing at this point of maintenance commitment. And you definitely don't want to put a lot of a cost. Okay, so that's what we're seeing here. When optimum was low, and here is the reason why we're choosing this position. Okay, here. Optimum is low. Because we want to maintain that point, which is the preventive mean has got to be lower than the cost of repair and breakdown. Okay, but if you consider here the optimum, it's not low. Optimum is at a sudden line right there. Okay, at that time, doing a preventive maintenance costs more than the repair and breakdown. Okay, see that? So therefore, uh, so right here again, you will have to choose the time in your system, optimum, okay, is low. So meaning like your production system, working condition, which is your optimum system, is down okay at that time you're going to do preventive maintenance and that cost okay is going to be lower than letting that optimum okay low level optimum system go into a breakdown yep if your optimum is high there's no need to do preventive maintenance it's just a waste of time anyway and repair and breakdown can happen because your optimum system is right. I think get that point. If you don't get it, try to study, okay, by drawing too much time. So if you need to know, can be able to get just by listening to the video lecture, you can come to me, okay, show it to you again. Don't just read like that. You have to study as you read it. Think what is the same. Okay? We're not doing an English composition here. We're, we're training our brain to think, not our mouth to talk. <laughs> Talking is easy, but understanding uh, inside of your brain yeah, what's going on. That that's that's scholarship. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. So here is a calculation. Example. So example is something that you have. Your car, let's say, catalytic converter. And your car optimum is low because you're having an issue with your catalytic converter. It won't break down right away. You can still run the car and you will have some money coming up. Okay. So catalytic converter can cost depend on the model of your car, 300 to 2,500. Maybe this is just an example. So anyway, it costs this much. Let's say it's coming range. Okay. Uh, this is not minus. It's just the way they write it. That's not minus. That's that's just a range. Telling you like uh, that they write the exam. It's not very good. R E N G E A range. So it's gonna cost you three hundred dollars to twenty four hundred. Okay, dollars for catalytic order replacement. 
So we're looking at your car system optimum operation is low because of this component in your system. So we're going to take a look at cost. If you do maintenance preventive, yeah, exhaust and fuel system service clean. So your catalytic converter life is going up. That's going to cost you $50 and schedule service is $100, sometimes $80 most of the time, right? 60 to 80 So exhaust and fuel system services, so do your cleaning regularly, okay? It's going to cost you $50 to $200, okay? And that's what thinking about doing that cleaning and schedule service at $5,000 to $7,500 interval, okay? Catalytic converter. For oil is, I think, every thousand or five hundred, oh, sorry, every three thousand or five thousand miles that you have to do. Because our oil is a, it's a food the car. You need to change your changes. Use old oil, okay? It's not engine. So if you do fifty to two hundred dollars preventive maintenance, you're going to save, okay? So 300 minus 50 give you 250, 2,500 minus 200 give you $300, so this range. The way they write this example is like minus 250 to $2,300, you will save. Instead of doing repair and breakdown, and pay this much. Okay, you can do the preventive maintenance. By paying $150. Okay, at $5,000 to $7,500. So your car, okay, will not get a catalytic converter low, okay, uh, systems optimum um, operation. Okay, so therefore you want to apply the maintenance program in order to keep the system healthy okay so this is just a little example of the car so that you can see the cost so the stress right here is when the system is acting out the optimum is low do the preventive maintenance so therefore you will save that amount of money okay uh, to do the repair when the system into failure mode okay that's all you need to know all right so let me erase it let's go to the next slide cost of pew system cleaning so the cost of pew system cleaning is right here so this service is typically done at a fixed price regardless of make and model of the car so to do a simple guess addictive service the average cost is fifty to eighty dollars, and this is often done in conjunction. So I was right, eighty dollars, uh, with a shared use service interval and bundled, right, in with other things such as um, inspections and changes. Okay, so that goes like fifty to eighty, maximum two hundred, depends on the size of the car anyway. And the, okay. All right, so let's go to the next slide. So here we're going to study the cost and maintenance level. So we're going to use the same graph. So we are looking at cost and we're looking at maintenance commitment. We're looking at the condition preventive. Okay, and our repair. So that's where all the things are. So now let's take a look at the maintenance commitment. So when maintenance commitment that's zero, so going to this direction is increasing. Okay. The higher the level of maintenance commitment. So here low level here increased. 
the lower maintenance commitment. Okay, this is low on the pipe, increasing the direction. So this point, higher level of commitment. In this point, lower level of commitment. So the higher the level of maintenance commitment, the lower the cost of repair and breakdown. So we want to take a look at the cost of your repair. So your cost, that's your y-axis cost going up that way. Yeah. So yellow is higher than black. You increase the level of. See how cost is lower than a low level. See? Low level maintenance commitment. This, this much lower. Yep. And the lower the cost of preventive maintenance here. Preventive maintenance cost is higher at lower level of maintenance commitment. Preventive maintenance cost okay, is lower at higher level maintenance commitment. Okay. So the higher level of maintenance commitment now i'm drawing the lower the cost the lower level of maintenance commitment the higher the cost of preventive maintenance okay if you take a look at the repair let me erase this for you if you take a look at the repair, the higher the level of maintenance commitment, the lower the cost of repair. Okay, very good. Same yep. here, that line. I think you get it. The same proportion for both repair and preventive maintenance. Then now let's take a look at this. So here, The lower the level of maintenance commitment, so this one, this line, okay. And here is your repair and breakdown right there, okay. Looking at this one, repair and breakdown. So this is my repair and breakdown line, okay. This one, curved line like that. So the lower the curve higher yeah the level repair and breakdown cost the higher the level of maintenance commitment the lower cost of repair and breakdown now i'll take a look at pm pm is nothing but the preventive maintenance okay so for pm the same thing this line right there and then that line here the higher level of commitment okay the lower the cost of pm the lower the level of maintenance commitment the higher the cost of preventive maintenance okay so i think you get it okay. it's the same thing okay this will take you about five minutes to get it and this is going to be uh, in your midterm, so make sure you get it correct. And I might ask you to draw, or I might ask you to fill in the blank. Okay. All right. Um, these are just the objectives, right? So when you take a look at it, it's just a diagram. What we do, objective or maintenance, okay, industrial maintenance, or maintenance management, or maintain the system. And we're going to control the cost. In order to maintain the system, we do that. In order to control the cost, we're going to do this and this. First, we will monitor the labor and material and calculate and then we're going to consider the production costs 
This reduction loss is a result of inadequate and ineffective maintenance. Okay, so therefore you want to eliminate that. Okay, to eliminate this. Yeah. So therefore you can do this. Yeah, if you can do this, your system is going to be working. Yeah. Okay, for manufacturing, we have maintenance goals. So why do we do the maintenance and manufacturing? Because we want to satisfy primary and secondary goals. The very first one is to keep our equipment that's a component of the system okay, uh, in good condition. So we maintain them. We do inspection, clean and lubricate the equipment. We also modify, alter, and do some installation. Okay. And then we do utility generation, distribution, and management. We maintain the buildings and the grounds. Because they're all in the system, they're all components of the system, so they will do all of that. And we modify, alter the thing. So these are all what we do in maintenance, management, in manufacturing. Maintain the equipment, inspect the equipment, clean the equipment, lubricate the equipment. Modify the equipment, alter the equipment, and install whatever that is necessary for that equipment. We take a look at the utility, how are we generating, how are we distributing, and how are we managing. We take a look at our buildings and the ground and make sure they're okay. okay for the system to be perfectly running. If it is necessary, you can alter or modify the building for your manufacturing system at working condition. Secondary and goals. So why do we do maintenance for secondary goals? So we want to protect and secure our plant. Okay, manufacturing plant, place, place of manufacturing. And we want to manage okay, uh, out of date. Obviously, it's nothing, it's a big word for it. It is uh, out of date, okay, rusted equipment and the waste disposal. And we also want to control okay, the noise and the pollution. This, this, is, this is a big thing okay, that's completely linked to the environmental PA people. You know, the uh, uh, pollution is especially. It, um, the greenhouse gases, okay, which is messing up the weather, the air, and the water patterns. Uh, so we, we are planet, right? And everybody, all of us, is the stock planet uh, with gravity, right? And all the buildings, everything on it is a mess right there. Everything that we have sharing limited space. In in the air, the land, and the water. You know, we have our ocean, continents, and people on it, and all the things that we build. So it is a very complex living planet. And you can, energy is a, energy is ability for something, okay? So we have nothing but in the universe, just your objects, okay? Living and non living objects, and they need energy potential and all potential energy, and which is your kinetic energy. So everything is either floating, okay, in a space or being you know, floating. So our planet don't have 
unlimited space, a very limited space with what you put in. Okay, it's so important. Share no place. It comes production products, also production plates. We have billions and billions and billions of devices and cars running by operating on uh, planet. That's just messing up space. All right. And since there are so many things in a little bit of space, they push around. So that's in, you know, these the pressure first and push the air masses. And so you're getting all the weather. A tornado, gusses, okay, soon on the unfavorable patterns because of the, something disturbance happened in okay, this space. So they all push around. Uh, like the volcano, the volcanic eruption is going to push the air and water and connected spaces yeah so it creates a tsunami it creates a land push things like that and the air okay which is good. so therefore also have to think about to load our limited space okay the ada epa osha so the familiar terms to work. They will train you for just like for two days training and all the clients okay, that just go to the management of a go to watch or something to read, okay? So any other function that may be deemed appropriate by the plant manager. So these are all the secondary maintenance goals why we do maintenance or to satisfy the primary and the secondary. I'll make sure you study your part. and I want you to get okay uh, the meaning of these organizations and what they do. Okay, uh, that's for you to research. I'm not going to give it to you to directly. So if you don't listen to my lecture, then if I ask you this in midterm, and you will say, sing on out of that. So make sure you study this. Okay, so maintenance management structure. So maintenance is again all about planning, then scheduling, so that's into the management structure plan you're going to set the goals so we know the destination you're going to set the objective that's kind of like the goals okay how you how you that destination so you're going to set the procedure maintenance so what kind of steps you take in this route to get to that destination what kind of procedure you do Okay, in this objective to reach that goal. So when we do the planning, we consider the amount of the maintenance or the size of the maintenance and the scales of the labor. Okay, and also the size of the labor needed. So these are all planning thinking. Think about the cost, think about the people, think about their scale. Okay, scheduling is the execution of the activity, maintenance activities. So how are we going to execute? So here is where we prioritize the essential stuff. So how do we do the priority? We check sources, crew material, so that's availability. So if you know the availability, you know the priority. Okay, you can manage in the right direction maintenance so it will disturb the regular system. Backlog is an unfinished 
but something is incomplete. And you're going to also have to manage that way to finish it. And we usually walk around as about two to three weeks. That's based on the median uh, size of the system. So anyway, there's no need to go into details. Maintenance management. We do planning. We do scheduling. When we do the planning, we set the procedure to satisfy objectives and uh, realize the goal. Look at the amount of maintenance, designs, and skills of the labor. For scheduling, we execute pay okay, whatever that you plan maintenance activities by looking at the quality and resources. Also, at the same time, you manage your unfinished work. Okay, okay back to lock. You have to have optimal size, so that's the people, right? In order to manage the back. CMMS is nothing but uh, it's a computerized maintenance management system that we use. We we'll see this system every train. Okay? CMMS. Okay? It's just a system an application that you use to manage that. So let's take a look at this equation. Since this is a textbook, we're not going to use this okay, ready-made. But in real life, it's easy. to so just input data and this this is going to give you okay, a calculator. Okay? And for university scholarship, theoretical should know how to do it by hand. Okay? So let's see and study the mathematical background of it, of this. Yeah? So the optimal crew size. Crew size is nothing but your number is under your management. So here is the first equation. Learn how to calculate Crew size. Okay. So crew size is equal to schedule hours divided by backlog time hours. So you can determine or calculate the size based on the level of backlog. Backlog is not the unfinished work. So if you have an unfinished work, you have to come up with how many M is you need to finish that job. Yeah? So you can write back long right there. Back long is not even if we say like unfinished work, unfinished work. In scientific unit, okay, this is time. Time. So it goes by weeks. Back long of three weeks. So, but commonly, when we say back long, the brain won't be thinking time. Brain will be thinking task okay, or activity. So make sure that's why we I have to teach you have to teach you um, the mathematical background and scientific units. Okay, behind CMS, right? We've been using the computer ads, and you become detached from the mathematical background. So make sure you understand it before you go to workforce the new theories behind that. So precise schedule hours is schedule hours we're looking at per week. This is common sense okay backlog is in weeks time time hours is again we're talking hours Okay. So here is a simple example. If the schedule requires 1,400 working hours, labor hours, maintenance work during 8 hours a week. Okay. 
So 40 hours week is your operation hour. Schedule hours for the main says 1,000 of labor hours. Okay. You want to know how many people you need to do that maintenance with a backlog three weeks. Okay. So the crew size you're going to be needing for this example is 12 people size is equal to schedule hours per week, 1,100 labor hours for that maintenance work, divided by the late three weeks work, times, this is your 40 hours a week, okay, to work, you will get the size or the number of employees, the size of all the employees equal to 12, okay. So you have you can assign between eleven to twelve. We usually round up eleven, six, seven. You cannot divide a person. So if you get eleven, six, seven medical value, that means more than eleven people. Okay? So therefore you have to use twelve workers to do that. So yeah. So that's what you do calculate when you do the maintenance management so now the equation also can be rearranged we're going to rearrange okay so we're going to take this backlog out so that's just your algebra okay here we're going to move it to this side so we rearrange it and we get equation two so the equation two, we're looking at backlog. We're trying to calculate the weeks, okay? Um, unfinished work weeks. So backlog is equal to schedule hours per week divided by time hours per week, okay? So backlog equal to Put it in a systematic equation right there. Schedule hours, size time hours. Hours per week okay, is your work time. That's for the maintenance a work. Uh, required hours to do that maintenance work. This is regular hours per week for business operation hours. Okay. Then you would get backlog which is the unfinished, okay? Which is the time taken to do finished work. You can calculate this way. Total productive maintenance is TPN. T P okay. that's called total product maintenance. So TPM aim to achieve zero breakdowns, okay? Meaning like zero failures and then zero defects. Don't want breakdown, want the defects. So therefore you have to maintain Okay, total. That's why we say total productive maintenance. So what do we do? We do three things. Okay, do the equipment effectiveness. We're going to put a continuous power system. And how do we do it? We do it by active in participation of all is okay? all the total productive maintenance of what of the system okay of train system so in other words for us to be able to uh, keep our system running uh, 
breaking down of defects or fewer defects, we have to make the operator a part in the maintenance equipment management. Making an operator a partner, meaning why we want them to okay, and we want them to participate with to involved. So since they're actively and participate okay, in our in our operation to keep the equipment effect and to provide a continuous and old system, our system will always be healthy. Okay? That's what we call it maintaining a uh, system productivity total. It means that just, in other words, are looking at the system, monitoring the system uh, by involving everybody in the system. And since they're actively doing their job, their part, and they are the parts of the system, the system would be always running. Okay. okay. Operators are so important in a manufacturing system, operators are so important in a total of maintenance because their responsibility is maintain the system productivity. Okay? So the operator groups, in other words, the autonomous groups, they are completely given responsibility and also they are empowered, meaning like they can practice okay, their their duty with their own will, not waiting for somebody to tell them to do, meaning they do it. Okay. And they take ownership of the equipment they're running. And they take responsibility for basic and routine maintenance activities. Because they know what they're doing, know how to maintain, know how to do the route. So you have to give them power, how to rely on them, and you have to trust their responsibilities so they will take ownership of what they do so that your system is running. Okay? And that operator responsibility is so important in total productive system. Okay? So basic and routine maintenance activities are you do housekeeping. Housekeeping is nothing but keep the system pretty clean, running, equipment, okay, you have to clean the equipment. Because if you use a dirty equipment, okay, it's not be efficient. We have to protect on the dirt, it's dirt, and mess up with all the sensors. But our manufacturing system is really smart, because we use a heavy technology robots. So therefore, dirt is our machines need to be located, need to be clean, and need to be free of dirt and to function. Here, lubrication. In order for dirt free and to be 100% uh, lubricated, okay, in order to be clean, go to inspect, inspection, okay. Machines, uh, they can go jam, not working, or stop, whatever, so they'll do do this house cleaning, cleaning, dirt, all location, and inspection all the time. Routine, routine adjustment. So, thus, operator, a responsibility, and what they do in order to keep the system running to the maintenance program. Okay, this is the slide for this chapter. So, there are six obstacles very significantly big obstacles okay tpm programs to uh, survive so tpm programs strive to reduce the eliminate six major obstacles so why do we have to eliminate it on the equipment to be affected so the system will be running so what do we do First, we get rid of failure. Second, we get rid of setup and routine adjustment. 
we're going to get rid of idle time and times of block stoppage. Uh, we're going to eliminate the reduce speed. We're going to eliminate the defects. We're going to eliminate the startup problems. Okay, startup and it's not running and start the machine or engines and system. So you want to eliminate all of that. Every time you start, you start. You don't want defects. You don't want slow okay? operation. We want to reduce. We want to um, get rid of the reduced speed operation. Okay? The speed got that extended level. We don't like idle. We don't like stop. So get rid of all of that. We don't want to do adjustment because it takes time to set up team. We definitely don't equipment failure. Okay, so that will take care of So you have to take care of the operator who take care of these. Okay? So that's what we do in total productive maintenance. So in this chapter of calculation part, you should know how to calculate crew size and backlog. Realize that backlog is not an activity, it is time. Okay, the unit is weeks. Okay, I'm going to stop right here.